Hey guys, Steve, Mel, and Dixie here mm -hmm. today. The hey shop Dixie. doggy. The shop dog. We're back with a new video. Um, we loved the feedback from the last one, and we thought on this one we would do a review of both of our side by side. So I pulled them in the D3 yep. shop here to try and get uh, a nice video for you guys. To try and get good at this camera thing too at the same time. So bear with us. We're figuring it out as we go. Yeah. Um, so we've had the side-by-sides for, well, mine and then his for just over six months now, and we've put 1,200 kilometers on them. Um, miles for you Americans, that is 745, I think. So yeah. in six months, we've put a good chunk on there. And uh, we have taken them through mud. We have taken them through high-speed whoops. We have taken them through, loaded them up, taken them back country camping, rocks, we've put them through everything. So I think we've really gotten a good sense of what they're capable of and yeah, figured we'd pass on our knowledge to you. Yeah. So um, Mel is the one who really wanted to get into the side-by-sides. I came from the Ultra 4 racing scene. <laughs> so. Why, Mel? Why did you want the Kawasaki KRX out of all the models on the market? We started looking at, I believe it was a Can-Am. Can-Am Maverick Sport specifically. And we settled on the Cowie. So yeah. why, why did you choose that? Um, well, one, Steve used to ride Cowies in his dirt bike days, and he said they were very trustworthy and reliable vehicles. So I was like, oh, I like reliable. Sounds good. Uh, and then two, everything that they came with stock. So all Kawasaki KRXs come with beadlock wheels, which is not something you get on a lot of other brands of side-by-sides. And just how beefy everything is. Everything is so stout on these. If you look at the A-arms, the A-arms are just massive. Got wrap my hand around that. Big the shocks. Big shocks. Big suspension, everything's beefy. Yep. Actually, one of the big things that I sold me on it is these doors. Oh, yes. We always forget about this until we go and ride with the other people, <laughs> but they have an outside door handle and an inside. It's like a regular, it's like a regular car, okay? Now, <laughs> when you spend this much money on a side-by-side -side and you have to reach inside and pull a little rope to open your door and it's like a suicide door, I think it's kind of chintzy. Yeah. So, Having the it's regular race car doors, things you wouldn't understand. Yeah, having the regular doors just like a Jeep does, it that sold me on it. Yeah, and being a similar size to a Jeep TJ. Yeah. So we, if you don't know us at all, uh, we come from an off-roading background. We both came from Jeeps originally, and we wanted to simulate that kind of riding style. So we do a lot of Northern Ontario riding, which is a lot of rock, a lot of mud. We needed something that was kind of a jack of all trades that could billy goat any terrain. Yeah. And from what we saw, this was kind of the rig. And yeah. another thing we loved from stock is you can put 35s on them. Yeah, you no buy this thing, you can slap 35s on it. It's good to go. No lift kit and no. everything's beefy enough to handle the 35s. You're not blowing yes. axles or diffs or ripping it arms off or anything. They're, they're very stout. Yep. And we didn't buy them to go racing. We bought no. these to load them up with camping yep. gear and go exploring and camping yep. and just do uh, wheeling events where you stay at a cottage and stuff without your camping gear in them. But yep. these aren't your go fast race machines in our, for us. That's not what we got them for. No. And when we were looking at the Cowies, there was multiple things that kind of drew us toward the special edition. One, the color. Yeah, I wanted blue. the pretty blue, the personally. Sparkle. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but. Oh, it looks pretty sparkly. It's metallic. It's yeah. really cool. And it's hard to find good photos of that online. Yes. And two, it comes with a stereo stock. And yeah. I don't just mean the stereo. I mean, it has a whole sub in the back. Yeah, so it's a high phonics. Yeah, and, uh, and there's it a it's bumping. There's a subwoofer back here that lights up too. And yeah, if you go into the settings on the stereo deck, you can set it up so yeah. that it gets bumping. Yeah, yeah, we'll be ripping down the trail doing 80, 90, and you can still hear your tunes yeah. with a helmet on. So that yeah. says something. So that was one thing as well. Another is it comes with a winch stock. Well, with the special edition. So it comes pre-wired into the cab. So there's no fussing around with it. And it's a side-by-side, -side. you're going off-road. 
You need a winch. Of course. But winches are for quitters. Winches are for quitters. <laughs> uh, though I've already used mine in one but video. You've had to use yours, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and yeah, like we said, the two and a half inch Fox coilovers, these on their own, we were originally going to build a 2007 Jeep JK that had a blown up engine and we were going to one ton swap it, put an LS or yeah, one ton swap it, put an LS in it, um, yeah. coilovers, everything. all everything. Like this is just as good. Yeah. And it actually one it. of, one of the other things about the suspension that drew me to it when we were looking at the Can-Am. Maverick, Maverick Sport. Yeah. I didn't like them because the rear was a double A arm, just like the front on the Cowie, but on the back of the Cowie, it has this trailing arm. And if you want to lo learn more about suspension, a trailing arm nets you a lot more travel out of the same size shock. So the back of this thing, I think, has like 21 inches of travel. And I'm 18. confident to tell you without looking up the specs that yeah. the uh, Can Am doesn't have 21 inches of yeah, travel. I think it was like 14. Yeah, or something. something. Yeah. And the one nice thing that Cowie does is they actually spec their travel without the skids going through the floor. Yes. Where a lot of the other manufacturers, yeah. they tell you it has more travel, but your yeah. skid plate will be through the ground. So yes, and it's... I love that. Cowie really dialed in the suspension. It's a lot like a trophy truck geometry, the way the front end is built, yeah. um, the way it handles. It, it's great. So that, it's quite comfortable. that drew me to it. Yeah. So those that's what drew us to specifically Kawasaki and this model. And so far, it seems to have lived up to uh, what we bought it for, I think. Yeah, so mm. uh, let's go over some of the mods. So I'll give Mel the camera. Um, both of them have a lot of the same mods, but mine has a few more mods. So we'll start at the front of mine and work our way back, and then we'll go over some of the things that Mel's has. So I like to jump a lot and go through the air. So I went down, talked to Jake, and got his brace kit. It was one of the first things I did. But it ties the front shocks together up top. And also his A-arm kit, which you probably won't see with the lighting, but there's no, brackets dark. that go in between those A-arms. Um, you probably noticed that the A-arms are also black, not red, so they are upgraded. Those are super ATV because the factory red ones, I hit a rock up north and bent one. I was going pretty quick, so they're tough, but they still break, anything breaks. So it's got the A-arms. I did the full shock therapy package. I got the limit straps, all eight coil springs. I got the steering upgrade with Heim joints. I also did 300M ball joints. Well, I had the front end apart, I figured do everything. The back also has shock therapy springs, so it's a eight spring kit or, yeah, yeah, all of them. Um, all the springs. All the springs. I got the caps when I did the shocks to do the nitrogen. And then on Mel's machine, I didn't buy the caps. I just machined hers and put a Schrader valve in so I could adjust hers. Because both of these machines have full valving inside. I've been in the shocks a handful of times and the valving's pretty dialed in now. Um, we got the Kawasaki fender flares with them, brand new from the dealer. Highly uh, suggest these. Highly suggest those, they're pretty good. We've got mirrors on both. We've got cages on both, custom roofs, cages. Um, on the inside, we've got PRP seats, custom seats, diamond stitch. These are suspension seats, they're super, super comfy. They've got foam pads on the harnesses, the five point harness. Um, they're heated seats, there's buttons for the heaters. Um, we've also wheel. got PRP steering wheel to go with the seats. We've got uh, comm systems from Rugged Radio in our cars and all our friends are running it. Um, we've got PRP storage bags behind the seats. There's some storage pouches. Um, I have a Rugged Radio's air pumper system for the really dusty days. When you're not leading the pack, if you're back in the pack, you get a face full of dust. So air pumpers are a really nice feature to have. Um, got the subwoofer, the stereo. I got the Kawasaki trunk. So you can carry just like a belt and some recovery straps, first aid kit, just odds and ends in the trunk. Uh, a hitch from full access UTV from Jake again. One of the other items we got from them. Um, I've upgraded the Brute 
Root Performance, I think it's company, uh, carrier bearing on the drive shaft. Change that out on mine. It's a billet piece with a bigger bearing. They're known to get play in them and they vibrate on the road, so I just figured while well, it was apart this winter, because we don't drive a lot in the winter, did the bearing. You got the wheels. Got the race line rims. Race line rims. 15 oh, by 10s. <laughs> Dixie likes the rims. Dixie likes the rims. Um, we also did the full fuel system from Jake at Full Access. So it's a higher flow fuel filter. It's a rollover valve and it's a billet fuel rail at the injectors on the motor. Um, these things, a few times, it's big on the internet, you hear about it, but a few times we were out and they wouldn't start after you stopped on the trail. Because the coolant lines run through the center of the car, they go right through the gas tank. As you get less fuel in the tank, the fuel gets hotter and it can vapor lock. You can't let the air pressure out of the tank and you'll go over, you'll pop the gas cap, you hear it go and lets the gas out. So the rollover vent helps with that. And then the rail and the filter just helps the pump move a little easier. It's not struggling as hard to feed the motor. I still do find that mine has uh, DXL popping, lean popping at times, but I have just got a DynoJet tuner, so I'll start playing with the tune on the motors. Um, they did kind of make it feel like it had a little bit more power, a little bit more snap. I don't know, it could be placebo effect once we put the fuel rail and stuff on, but we did the fuel, the fuel upgrade. Um, and then on Mel's machine, she's got different PRP seats. Different layout, different color scheme. Um, and she has the factory stereo. Oh, oh I guess yes. I didn't show Didn't... mine. Uh, it's got the Back seven inch, one. the Kawasaki seven inch upgrade screen. So if anyone is interested in information on that, I could drop a comment below. We could do a video on that as well. There's not a lot of information of that on the internet. It has the uh, front and rear cameras on that, so I can watch them while I'm driving. It has GPS, it has vehicle diagnostics, check engine codes. There's a bunch of stuff on that. So Mel's just has the regular Hyphonics. Um, and uh, you've got the tailgate, but not, oh, a, yes. not a box. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think so. For the most part, odds and ends here and there probably, but yep. yeah. So, uh, so things that we have found that we weren't really big fans of, I guess. Excuse your head. Come on. <laughs> um, they get really hot inside. Very hot. Yeah. I mean, the two, one thing we love is there's tons of storage in it. So there is five cup holders in it, so you can have every beverage that you want. But two of them are kind of useless. Two of them are kind of useless because what happens is it's you have your coolant line that comes in through here. Similar to the fuel issue. Yeah, it boils your drinks in here. And I've even had it where I've had my phone up here charging because there is a USB port and auxiliary port up here. You, stuck, you stick your phone in there to charge and it's overheated while you're riding. Kind of useless. Yeah. Um, but apparently Kawasaki has fix that issue. There's a shroud you can get from the front now that deflects the air. So it stops it from getting so hot in here. So it, they come on the 2023 and I think you can buy them separately for the 2022 and 2021. So they heard us. They fixed it. Thanks, Cowie. Appreciate well, it. We'll see. We haven't bought it yeah. yet. It might <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do a whole video about that. Yeah. Um, another thing is it is quite loud. The engine's right behind you though. So you can't really like compared to get a turbo to, unit. Yeah, we ride with we ride with a Polaris turbo and we ride with a Can Am turbo as well. Both of those are quite quiet. Yeah, but, the turbo helps. Yeah, the turbo helps, and who knows? Maybe one day this will get a little pew pew. Did maybe, I do that right? No, that maybe. sounded like pew, sounded pew. like more of a gun. Yeah. Pew. There. <laughs> I don't know. I can't I can't do turbo noises. <laughs> uh, um, another thing we did notice riding with the Can Am and the Polaris is these take a lot more gas. So the Polaris, I think during our whole trip that we did up in Mattawa, which was, I think it was about 600 kilometers, he filled up once during the whole trip. I think we filled up every night. Yeah, we did, so, every day. Yeah, yeah. it was. We're it, averaging about 160 to 200 yeah. kilometers a day and we were filling up every day. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's not miles per gallon, it's miles per gallon, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> So I think those are really the only things that we've come across that are kind of, 
I feel like we're nitpicking personally. Besides the heat thing, I could take, I could leave the heat. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Oh, and I'd, yeah, 100% get the extended fender flares because the front ones, you get so dirty. We took it. Yeah, they're pretty wide. We took it for a rip when we first bought it with the stock flares on it, not these ones. And yeah, the whole side just gets covered. Now I don't know Face about you, but I don't like cleaning. So the cleaner you can keep it, the better. Um, awesome. Top five? Yeah, if you had to pick five mods, if you were starting over again on a brand new machine yeah. for a Cowie, yeah. what would be the five things that you would want? Number one, for sure, seats. We bought the seats before we even had the Kawasaki because we just, we just knew. Yeah. Um, but these, awesome. these PRP seats are suspension seats. So even without doing any suspension work, you feel like you've already done suspension work, which is a bonus. Yeah. And your spine will thank you. Yeah, and they're heated. And they're heated. So if you get as, that. Yeah, especially in Canada, we do a lot of uh, shoulder season riding or in the mornings, it's quite cool. It can be very, very beneficial. So seats with the harnesses, obviously. Yep. My number one, awesome. for sure. Yeah. Awesome. What about you? I think I would agree. Um, I think, yeah, I, I love the seats. Seats are super important. Uh, I like my seats. I got the diamond stitch and different color scheme kind of, but I, I still love the seats. They're one of my top, if not my top. And then being a guy who really enjoys suspension stuff, I think my number two would probably be to get into the suspension. Factory, the shocks are really good, but once you get in and start playing with that stuff, you can make it even that much better. Yeah. You know? That's just me personally. Yeah. Um, and you can go from, you know, the whole setup that Steve has, which is probably like $1,500 Canadian of suspension work, or you can go as simple as what we've done with this one, where you put in the Schrader valve and you just fix your nitrogen. And do the valving. And do the valving. And the spring sagging is kind of a, I feel like it's folklore. It's not really happening because yeah, look at this. We haven't it's, seen any sag. Once no. I did the nitrogen, uh, that thing is sitting at the exact same ride height yeah. as mine with the shock therapy. And we have the same miles. We load them up yep. the same weight. We drive the same trails. So yeah, I so think, suspension, yep. definitely number two. Yep. Number three, tires. Like yes. we said, you can do these from factory, so do these it. These are the 35 inch Moto Ravage XLs. I haven't seen a lot of people run no. these. But they're... these have taken us through everything. Yeah. They're not an amazing rock tire, nope. we'll give them that. But mud, they get through mud like no one's business. It's amazing. They're an awesome all around yeah. tire. Yeah, they've and done tough, a really good tough job. Tough as nails. Yeah. yeah, we haven't had any issues with them. No leaks, no punctures. Um, and adding 35 gives you a plushier ride as well. Yep. Is plushier a word? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> so it gives you a more it. cushy ride. Um, so even if you say did tires number two, you're already going to have a more comfortable feeling <laughs> side by side than you did stock. So that's yep. my thought at least. I think uh, one of the other really important mods that we, we both have is the mirrors. Oh, um, 100%. It's, it's hard to drive these things if you don't yeah. have a set of mirrors on them. Well, you can, obviously. They don't come yeah. with mirrors, and they're a really cheap upgrade to get. So yeah. if you're going to buy one, I think mirrors are yep. pretty awesome, pretty important. Another thing, I guess one other downside or complaint, but I don't think any side-by-sides have them, is they don't have reverse lights. So there were a few times on the trails where I almost backed into other people because you're strapped into these seats yeah. and you can't really turn around to see who's behind you. So these mirrors are Super a lifesaver. Beneficial. Yeah, it's saving your plastics, it's great. And these specifically, of... fold in, fold out, so you hit a tree, you're good to go, you just put it back to where it was. Maybe I that'll be one of our up. next mods is putting some uh, reverse lights on the back of yes. this thing and wiring them into the yeah. reverse sensor. It would make a big difference for sure. So that's definitely number two. And then we have the big rear view up there. Yeah, yeah. Which so is also three sweet. mirrors on both, for yeah. sure. Um, and number four is definitely cage, because the stock one is ugly. Yeah, so both and of these I don't, are dropped. Yeah, I don't think the uh, stock one would do too well in a rollover, personally. The cage and the roof helps, too. So I made an aluminum roof for them, and I rolled on the front of it down the windshield, and that helps with the sun, it helps with the rain, it helps actually when the wind hits this little half windshield and kicks the dust up, it goes right over the whole thing, you almost get no wind inside. It actually yeah. worked out 
pretty slick. Though one thing I don't like about them is when they get dirty on the trail and you get sun, you can't see, you can't see anything. So what I do on the trail is I take this off. Yeah. If we're getting back on the highway. I pull over on, on the trail, put it back on. Yeah, they're just Velcro. Yeah. So these are both uh, super ATV half windshields. They're just a uh, Lexan or polycarbonate or whatever. They're just Velcro on. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Last but not least, the cage. Yeah. Style, safety, everything. It's pretty great. So I think that about sums up. I think everything. so. Oh, do we want to give our final review? Our final review. Our final review. What's our final review? I mean, it's not final, final, but as of now, I think they're pretty great. They have lived up to every expectation that we have wanted from them. Um, and we've driven our friends, other models, Polaris, yep. Can-Am. Yep. And there were things that we really didn't like about both of them. These, zero bumps here. Can-Am, almost, tons and tons almost ripped the here. entire steering wheel out of my hand. Yeah. The suspension geometry is totally yeah. different. Polaris, box like a Bronco. Yeah. Suspension out of the box is not quite anything close to this. Geometry on both of them is yeah. very, once you've tried a cow, if you've never tried one and you're a turbo guy, then you'll love it. And yeah. there's, yeah, that's something to be said. If yeah, you love each, the turbo and the speed, Each vehicle is, I find, purpose, purpose built. built. They're yeah. purpose built. Except 100%. for this one. This one so does everything. Hopefully this helps you with uh, figuring out if this is the right purpose for you and what yes. you want to do. This works for us. Yeah. This is our trail rigs, super plush, super comfy. Um, they're pretty dialed in now. So yeah, if you've got any questions or you want any more in-depth videos, leave a comment below. Yeah, we can do a suspension video. We could do a whole video about the center console. Yep. Anything. And then uh, in a little bit here, we're gonna try and get a ride together with a Can-Am and Polaris and a bunch of other machines. And a little we'll bit of and, winter wheeling. We'll go out and play and get some cool riding footage. Yes. All right, until next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Steve? Steve? Mel? Oh, Mel? I'm, getting, I'm not bad at outro recording, so. <laughs> Say bye to Dixie. Oh, Dixie. Dixie. Bye. Goodbye, Dixie. Say bye.